If you've been following this channel regularly, then there's a good chance you know that one of my biggest gripes with people these days, including grown adults, is that we get completely bent out of shape when called out on our crap. And as a result, we often tiptoe around issues because we'd rather just keep the peace. But every now and then you have that one person who doesn't conform to any of that and just says, screw that, I'm gonna save my mind unfiltered. One prominent example of that is Sean Strickland. In case you're unfamiliar with him, he's been an MMA fighter since 2008, currently competing in UFC, where he holds the middleweight champion title currently. And additionally, he's been known to speak his mind unfiltered. As an example, he's been very open about his position on the COVID-19 jab. So yeah, I just sit on the interwebs reading f conspiracies about f COVID and shit, you know? <laughs> Congratulations. Anti-vaxxer, by the way. I'm not saying vaccines are bad, but, you know, fuck. Try to force me to tell me to get a needle in my ass leave the country. Fuck you guys. Uh, continue. Are we all good? All right. As well as where he stands on the Second Amendment and guns. Overall, he's just been known to say a lot of out-of-pocket stuff, and there's literally compilations on YouTube of him saying all that stuff. And we're going to watch a brief clip of that. Every white person I've ever met when I was a kid, and I would, you know, draw a swastika on my arm, they would be like, you. Nah, man, I want to you know, try to kill a man and get paid. You were training with him, so does that make you his bitch? Oh, this fucking bitch, dude. <laughs> I, I've never smacked a woman, but you're about to call me Would you like to learn some Chinese? Let's do it. Ni hao. What was that? Wait, what am I saying? What am I saying? Hello. Ni hao. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I should already start. How do you say work harder, child? <laughs> So when I start my clothing, when I start my clothing company and I open up a couple sweatshops, how do I, how do I get to the meat and potatoes of work harder, no food for you till you finish. So there you have it. And you could see, for an example, that the Asian reporter was laughing along with him because she knows that's his personality. Now, all of that came to a head and it was no different for Sean the other day during a press conference in Toronto when a Canadian reporter tried to ask him a question. Thanks. Sean, uh, Neil Davidson from the Canadian Press. Welcome mm. to Canada. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, Canadian Press, man. Were you, a, uh, were you a, uh, a COVID bank account stealer too? Were you on board with that? No. I, uh, Are you left wing or right wing? Were you a, tr were you a Trudeau? We got one of the, we got one of the <laughs> commies with the press. We got to know where this man stands. Were you non-biased? I think I'll ask the questions here. Oh, he thinks he'll ask. Oh, we fucking know. Maybe I should just pass on this. And then go back. He's going to go back and give my bank account information. Of no. <laughs> so for some brief additional context on what he was talking about regarding the bank accounts being stolen. In 2022, Canada had started mandating vaccines for people to travel cross country, which included truckers. And in response, they led a protest convoy against what they saw as tyranny. And in response, the Canadian government froze their assets. So in other words, they were protesting, which is their right to do peacefully, against what they saw was a violation of their bodily autonomy. Now you may be thinking in terms of that reporter, he didn't even ask any questions. Why was Sean being so aggressive right away? But also, Sean did ask him point blank, are you non-biased? Because newsflash, barely any reporter is non-biased and they always have their agenda to go on these pointless schmear campaigns and Sean was there to tell him that if you're there for that, I don't want any of this. Kindly move on your way. You can kindly f*** off then. But guys, it gets even funnier than that. Uh, we've got a pretty supportive gay and lesbian yeah. community in this city. I did want to ask you about something you wrote a couple of years ago. You said if I had a gay son, I would think I'd... Oh, look, another, another, yeah. I'm yeah. saying yeah. the swamp, you guys, the swamp. You become a champion, you become a star, and, and someone's... Let me ask model. you something. Are you, I, I, are you, I, I are you gay? Have you had the chance no, to are, interact with a more diverse Are, are you, of, let me know, are, are you gay? Can I hear, can I get an answer? Well, no, I'm asking, I'm, this is a part of, are you, are you a gay man? I'm an ally of the community. Okay. If you had a son, and he was like, you know, you had a son, he was gay, you'd be like, oh man, you don't, you don't want a grandkid? No problem with it. Oh man, well, you, dude, you're a weak man, dude. You're like, you're part of the problem. You elected Justin Trudeau. Like, with you, when he sees the bank accounts, like you're just pathetic. And and the fact that the fact that you have no backbone, and and has he shut down your country and seized bank accounts? You ask me some stupid like that. Go yourself. Move the on, man. Really, the question, but I did want to ask also things you said about the trans community. You said uh, this past October when they announced the Bud Light sponsorship that 
you'd go so hard on Bud Light in your next fight, they'll have to accept me or denounce me when uh, when they know what and they'll we'll know what they stand for. Are you this guy's like, nah, this Canadian's not that Canadian. Are you still going to use your fight time to kind of speak on that? Here's the thing about Bud Light. Here's the thing about Bud Light. Ten years ago, to be trans was a what a mental illness, and now all of a sudden, people like you have weaseled your way in the world. You are you are an infection. You are the definition of weakness. Everything that is wrong with the world is because of you. And the best thing is, is the world's not buying it. The world's not buying your peddling. The world is not saying, you know what? You're right. Chicks have dicks. The world's not saying that. The world's saying, no, there are two genders. I don't want my kids being taught about, you know, who they could fuck school. I don't want my kids being taught about, you know, their sexual preference. Like, dude, this guy is the enemy. Uh, you want to look at the enemy to our world? It's that motherfucker right there asking these stupid questions. So there you have it. That reporter wasn't there to ask him any related questions to wrestling. He was simply there to stir up his crap about his past. Now, for additional context, back in 2021, Sean said on X that if he had a gay son, he would feel like he failed as a man. In response to somebody asking if he'd rather have a gay kid or a whore daughter. Which people are entitled to feel how they feel. If you had a gay kid, no matter how much of an ally you may be, it might be hard for you to accept it initially. So I think that the reporter is lying to himself and everybody else when he says that he would be completely fine with it. But I might be reaching. But even beside that, he came in extremely bad faith. His goal was to paint Sean as a homophobe slash transphobe, and to an extent, he was able to make that happen. As the person who interviewed him, Neil Davidson, was able to publish an article about him, and also CBS was able to publish their article about him, calling it a homophobic tirade, and it gave the social justice warriors on XMT, where this Rachel girl here is calling it unhinged, anti-LGBTQ, and calling Sean a baby which was retweeted by almost 5,000 people and seen by 12 million people. And also, his comment about the transgender community was spot on. It used to be seen as an illness. Now in Canada, you can be jailed for misgendering your child. And that did happen. As a father in Canada was jailed for calling his biological female child, who transitioned, his daughter. Now thankfully, he appealed it successfully. But the mere fact that in Canada, you have to skirt around that issue proves Sean's point to degree. Now, these are issues that people like Neil Davidson were likely completely silent on, as well as the draconian COVID vaccine mandates. And Sean saw that he was full of crap and called him out on it, rightfully so. And I love how Sean has pretty much been unapologetic about it and proud about it, as he's been posting footage from the interaction to his own ex account. And I also love how the public has been reacting to this. With people calling him based, wondering why sports journalists are so worried about these social issues. I mean, we need more people like this in this world. Because with everything that Sean has said, from this, to his position on the COVID vaccine, to where he stands on the Second Amendment and guns, it makes him a perfect target to be painted as a transphobic, homophobic, white supremacist. But in spite of all of that, he refuses to bow down to the mob and appease people. Now, not that I agree with everything that he says per se, but in a world where it seems to be the norm to walk on eggshells with people, seeing people like Sean is refreshing, entertaining, and in its own way, endearing. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, hopefully I've earned a subscription. Here's some videos for you to watch in the meantime. Until next time, peace out.